Hello and uh, welcome to my shop. I'm Ron with Ideal Industries and welcome to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. Hey, in this segment we're going to talk about telephone basics and actually it's going to be a two-part segment. Uh, this is part one. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about telephones and uh, what you should know before you start working on one and uh, give you some insights as to what's, uh, what, you're, what you need to do when you're trying to maybe uh, troubleshoot a telephone problem. Hey, uh, you know, you should understand phones have been around a long time and if you want to make an image statement and go buy a phone from the 1970s or the 40s or the 50s, you know, you can buy them. And um, these old analog phones and uh, the early touch tone phones are still available out there. Uh, and they normally, since most uh, services really to all homes today are still analog in nature, um, uh, they should still work just fine and should continue in the future. Uh, now, somewhere down the road, the telephone company takes your signal and turns it into digital and sends it to, you know, wherever across the country or where we might be trying to call. But, it's, you know, your telephone system, you got to understand, is a mix of analog and digital today. But, uh, again, most services to homes are analog in nature, okay? So, uh, we're going to talk and get right kind of into this. And when you look at uh, telephones today and in the past, uh, if I had a telephone number coming to my house, one phone line, I needed at least one pair of wires from the telephone companies to do this. So, every telephone line required a pair, okay? And uh, if I had uh, two phone lines or three phone lines, obviously I'd need either four or six conductors or two or three pairs in order to make that happen. And you know, in old office buildings, you know, high-rise buildings and things like that, they could literally have hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pairs running in and out of them uh, for all the things that are, uh, you might find happening back in the day in old telephone systems. So. Uh, so today we need to pair for every phone line coming to us. Now, I'll explain this little wiring sequence a little later on, but you'll notice there's a T and an R under every one of the conductors, and you ought to understand what that is. And what that basically means is it's the tip and ring polarity of the two conductors. You need to understand that uh, basic phone is DC. Okay, And back in the day when the old neighborhood, uh, the power went out, and... Um, uh, our analog phones still work because they're using DC, not AC. Uh, so uh, be aware of the fact that it is DC in nature. So uh, uh, so what that means is positive and negative as we need in a DC circuit, okay? Now, the term tip and ring, believe it or not, comes back to way back in the day when the operator would be sitting at a console and they'd have a headset on with this pluggy thing that plugged into this console. And you understand, this is back in the day when we always had to go through an operator to make a phone call. And uh, if you remember the old, old movies, you'll see people cranking a handle on the side of a phone. And what that did, that generated a light on this operator switchboard over here, and they would be sitting there waiting for this thing to light up. And when it lit up, they would think, oh, someone's calling me, and so I need to, you know, talk to this person. So they would take their little headset and a little plug and plug into that opening, and then you could talk to the operator. And they could hook you up with the guy down the street or whoever the heck you were trying to call, or maybe long distance. Um, so, that's, I believe it or not how that happened back in the day. Now, one of the wires that goes up the house that makes up that pair is connected to the very tip of this connector. Uh, the second conductor that goes out to the home is hooked to this, what we call insulated ring. So, it's a separate thing on that plug. And the sleeve in that system was their ground. So, that's where the term actually came, you know, came from, tip and ring. And you got to understand, this is back in the 1920s. Not many people know anything about AC or DC. Or, and, and anyway, But you could teach that guy out in the field that, you know, this wire gets hooked to what we call the tip. We're really uh, referring back to this connector, and this goes back to the ring. Okay? So that's where the term tip and ring comes from, from back in the day. Now, as I said earlier, um, uh, this is an electrical circuit. It does have some DC and AC in it. And folks, just for pure safety reasons, if you're, uh, it is an electrical circuit, and you can get shocked by it. And uh, normally, not bad, uh, but it can happen. So if you're really concerned about it, you might disconnect the service on the side of the home, and I'll show you in a little bit how to do that in part two. Uh, before you work on your on your telephone services, but if you've never been shocked by phones, now the only time you find AC associated with phone is only when the phone's ringing. Okay, and so if you strip some telephone wire and you happen to have the conductors in your hand at the time it rings, uh, you're definitely going to get a, a shock out of this deal. Now, uh, the DC here, I'm not going to play with much, but the AC is kind of interesting because that does happen when when the phone's ringing. And we would typically tell you your ringing voltage in a home is somewhere around 90 volts, okay? Uh, depending how far away you might be from a central office. Now, you know, normal AC at the out in your room is usually 120 volts. 
uh, thereabouts, and it should be at what we call 60 hertz or 60, uh, uh, a frequency of 60 hertz. And that means the electrical signals here are turning on and off at uh, 60 times in a second, which is pretty fast. And uh, you got to understand for old uh, telephones, they had mechanical bells in them. And the mechanical bells had these cliners between them. And if the telephone company put a 60 hertz AC signal down that cable, that clanger would be going back and forth so many times, 60 times, uh, in a second that you basically would hear a solid tone. You wouldn't hear, be able to hear the cadence in the bell. So by dropping the frequencies down, all of a sudden we can hear that cadence in the bell. And you know, when uh, a phone rings, it's kind of a unique sound, and most people go, oh, that's a phone ringing. So um, it, a, it helped with that. And actually, it makes it safer, too. Believe it or not, uh, the human body tolerates AC at 20 hertz better than it does 60 hertz, which is evidently closer to what our, our body actually works at. So anyway, so that's a little bit about tip and ring that you ought to know something about in the circuit. And uh, you don't want to be flipping them back and forth kind of thing, okay? Hook, hook tips, tips, and rings and rings is the general rule, okay? Now, um, when you look at a phone, we make it into a lot of things today, uh, other than a phone. <laughs> but at its basics, what was it, or what it was intended to do? Well, its intention is to take a sound, convert it into an electrical impulse through a microphone, and then it can on the, on, send it across the wire, and on the other end of the wire, in the speaker in the other phone, it will turn it back into sound. So it's really all about generating sounds. And you should be aware of the fact that the telephone company is not going to recreate everything you can hear as a human. And they don't need to. They need to be able to transmit basic good voice patterns and, and, and speech. And so they recreate basically from about 400 hertz cycle frequency sounds upwards of uh, 3400 cycle frequency sounds. Okay. And you should understand that the uh, all sounds are, are basically waves, so to speak. So uh, uh, it's like dropping a pebble in a pond. When I drop that pebble in a pond, I get that rippling effect, and it's going at a number of waves per you know foot or whatever it is. Uh, in this, uh, it's, it's it basically it's creating a waves. Okay, and you can hear as low as 20 hertz. Uh, upwards of 20,000 hertz, and that's supposedly the perfect human, and probably not many of us can actually hear that good. But uh, anyway, so they're not recreating everything. So if you start singing on a on a phone, uh, the, the you know the phone company's cutting out the highs and the lows, so your buddy's never going to hear the highs and the lows of the song, and it might be one of the reasons why you might sound pretty good singing on a phone too, <laughs> uh, uh, other than versus if you were in the room with you. So anyway, so uh, that's all they're recreating is basic voice patterns. Okay. Now, this uh, ringer equivalency number thing, you ought to be aware of what that is. And, you know, I occasionally get people, you know, ask you, hey, Ron, do I have an analog phone or do I have a digital phone in my hand? Well, you can quickly tell if you look at the back of the phones, the phones should have um, some reference to the FCC on them. And if they don't have it, you cannot really use them here in the United States. Uh, they're afraid you're going to go out and buy a phone out and I don't know where and ship it in the United States and it might actually damage their stuff. So if uh, you're looking for it to say FCC and it complies with, in this case it's part 68 of the FCC rules. If it says part 68 and it's asking you for an REN number, uh, it's an analog phone. Uh, if it's a FCC part something else, like maybe part 15, uh, it, it would then be maybe like a cordless phone, which might be more like digital. Okay, but. Uh, uh, is still going to use an analog circuit, but uh, uh, so uh, got to be compliant there. Now the REN number, I know we've all tried this, or had this happen anyway. You and I are having a conference, uh, conversation someday on the phone, and uh, you uh, tell your your spouse to pick up the phone in the other bedroom, which is on the same extension of the one we're talking on. And when they pick up that phone in the other room, what happens to the level of the volume of our voice conversation? And if you're betting it goes down, it does. And uh, the more people, the more people on different extensions, the, the lower it gets, and to a point where you may not actually not be able to hear anybody. So, uh, you know, the question is, if I'm putting phones in somebody's home, and um, the guy wants eight telephone extensions in the house, because he's got eight kids, and all of them want to talk to grandma at one time, can we do this? Well, this is how you figure it out, okay? Well, all phones have this REN number associated with them, but again, it's on the back of the phone. And old analog phones had an REN number of one. And uh, the telephone company typically will let us have somewhere five or less. And uh, if you want to know exactly what your phone company is allowing, you'll have to call them. But uh, somewhere under five or less, okay? And uh, so the old analog phones were uh, an REN number of one. Um, and you divided that into five, which meant five. So all five of us could all be talking to Grandma at one time. 
what happens is if you go beyond this number, A, it's very hard to hear anybody on the phones because we're all on at the same time, and B, uh, the telephone company's not sending enough energy out to your house to ring all the phones. Uh, so um, uh, it's, that, that's the problem. Now, you know, a lot of these digital phones you buy today, uh, they uh, have an REM number as well, and you'll find that these digital phones are getting so low in REMs, it's like 0.2 today. So uh, all of a sudden, we can put a bunch more of those inside of a home. But if you got to a point where you were wanting to put phones in an office building and firing up literally hundreds, if not thousands, of extensions, well, you need to install a telephone system for, the, for uh, that building. It's not, not really residential. Okay? And uh, the sampling rate is kind of interesting because, you know, they are going to turn it into uh, digital somewhere in their system. And they will sample that analog line 8,000 times to actually create that signal for you uh, on the other end of the cable. Okay? And um, when I look at how we dial out today and uh, uh, make a phone call, you know, that's changed quite a bit too. You know, the old rotary dial phone actually came out in 1919. It's been around a long time. And of course, it's kind of dead today. But you still might find them. As I said earlier, you could find old phones on the internet. Um, and when I look at how that old analog phone actually dialed, basically what it is, is we put our finger in a number on the phone someplace, which had an opening in this dialer thing. We rolled the dialer over to the, the stop, and we pulled our finger out of the phone. If I put it in free, the phone would click, 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 or give me three pulses, basically. And four would be four clicks, and nine would be nine clicks or, or pulses. And <laughs> I'll bet you if you handed a, a rotary dial phone to a, a six-year-old today, they may not have any idea how to use it. but. Uh, Anyway, so that's how that worked. And you know, the old phones, you didn't even need the dollars. You could take the, uh, the head, handset off the phone and hit that button on top of the phone, one, two, three, first number, wait a half a second, and uh, hit the next number and wait a half a second, and you know, uh, and make the phone call that way too. Uh, it, it was very simplistic, okay? And it wasn't really reliable, okay? And uh, so uh, we came up with the touch tone phone uh, some time ago. Okay. Now, the touch tone phone is called a dual tone multiple frequency system, and uh, essentially what it means is that every f button on the phone is going to make a different sound. Okay. And when I push one on a keypad, it takes this, the tone over here and the tone across the top, and it merges them together, and it creates a, a unique sound. And when the telephone company hears this unique sound, they know you dial number one. And that's how we identify all the different uh, buttons on the phones. And they even have more buttons for uh, like uh, telephone test sets and things like that. But this is typically what you're going to find on your phone in your house, OK? And again, it's a, a touch tone type phone system. And uh, you know, it's interesting. I was watching a show uh, years ago, and it was saying that the touch tone phone saved the average human almost 400 hours in dialing in their lifetime versus the old rotary dial because it just took so much time to do that, OK? All right, so that's how we actually uh, uh, use the phone today. Now, I'm going to end part one right here, and uh, uh, do me a favor, watch part two. And in part two, I'll talk a little bit about you know how we wire, where we wire to, and, and uh, identify the connections and stuff we're doing. So, hey, thanks for coming. Uh, again, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and uh, we'll plan on seeing you next time.